But that's what I was talking about. I was talking about me getting uh, manhandled by a guy called Master. Yeah, you got, you got you got manhandled by the sixteen year old. So um, today I went and I, I went for a for a role with a a uh, good buddy of mine. He's a he's a personal trainer. I believe he's a, a purple or a brown belt. I'm not 100% sure. But I've literally rolled a handful of times and <laughs> he, he he's about 60 kilos and I'm a, I'm pushing 90. I'm I'm a chunky little fucker at the minute. And it was like it was the other way around. I, I could not get him off me and proper chimp strength. I couldn't couldn't do anything, and it's like I put on my post earlier after after we had a roll. I was like, I've I've been humbled because I'm used to being able to push people off me and and just not be the bigger person, but some most of the time I'm the stronger person. But he absolutely destroyed yeah. me today. That's the that's the thing. I'll always say this: where size doesn't matter when skill comes involved, but size does matter when the skill levels are the same. Especially yeah. grab striking, it doesn't matter as such. The bigger person could be a lot slower, the smaller one could be a bit quicker. Yeah. But when it comes to wrestling and grappling, size is the big advantage, but only if your levels are quite close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 his, his level far. <laughs> it, it was like he was in a different planet to what I was. He was about. Yoda. He was a yeah. young one and he was Yoda. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going back though. It's one of those. It's like a bug, isn't it? Once you you're like, well, he's he's made me look like a right tit. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to yeah. learn it now. I'm gonna have to get back. That's to my the thing with me is like a, um, I say I, I'm never I'm not a, I'm not a sore loser. I'm a bad yeah. loser. I mean, I don't like losing, but I'm not a sore loser. Well, I make an excuse. Okay, I'm like, okay, cool. You beat me. Next time, I'm gonna beat yeah. you. And that, yeah, that's why I, I like that. That's that's it. That's a good mindset, a good mentality to have, I think. I think there's too many people out there that when they lose, they automatically pull out every excuse under the sun. Yeah. It's like, at the end of the day, that guy was better than you on that no day. No one cares. Yeah. No. When people stop, look around, stop, stop, people, stop moaning. They don't, they don't go, ah, so so got beat by this guy. Oh, but you hear about that guy had a bad uh, week that week, you know, or that guy this or this. Yeah. No. Records, yeah, you, be, you got beat by that guy. That's who we care yeah, about. Exactly. So, one thing I did want to actually ask you about was um, literally because I was doing doing my Brad Pickett research today, going through YouTube and what have you, and uh, it, it was your last fight that you had in London, and I was just thinking how how you after, not after, directly after the fight, but I'd say a couple of days after. How were you feeling like? Because it was. Um, I'm just going to throw my example out there because I, I do that a lot on this podcast and everyone's going to go, Tomo, you're going on about it again. So when I left the military, it was like I left my identity behind. Did you sort of feel the same sort of thing when you hung up the gloves? Or Yeah, you could, yeah, 100%. And I still feel it to this day. Because like, uh, who I was, it was me being a fighter, it was a massive thing. It was a massive part yeah. of my life. Uh, and... Don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now, which is, I'm still involved in the sport, but I'm not who I was, you know, and who I was, I loved, and I think I think a lot of people who do anything like what, we, what I do in sports, you know, you got to realise there's only a shelf life, you know, you yeah. life, you know? so like, it is, I think it's very hard for a lot of sportsmen, that's why you see a lot of people hang around a lot longer than they should do, you know, because they can't get away from the sport, everyone goes, oh, you should retire, you should retire, but it's not easy to retire sometimes. No, definitely no, it's not. Not, not. Like, especially when they, they say that's all you do, that's all you know. You know, like, yeah. Look, it's like, you know, yeah, it's a, it, emotionally and mentally, it was tough. It was, it was very emotional going into that camp. You know, yeah. it's the last, last training camp. This, last that, last this. A lot of last. It was a very emotional thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, Always a very emotional kind of fighter as well. So, but yeah, you know, it, it was. Uh, you could you could see that on the. It was a uh, beautiful. It was a beautiful send off, and I couldn't ask for. Well, a lot of people, I believe, I retired the correct way. Where I told people when I was going to retire, in a weird morbid way, it's like dying, and 
<laughs> Everyone being that you're awake, but you're awake to hear what they've got to say about you. Yeah. You, know? you hear all the good comments where Dana White says nice things about me, Sean Shelby, uh, yeah, yeah. Dan Hardy, the, the, all, all, all the people say nice things about you, but you're not you're not dead. You're alive to hear it. So it's like, oh, pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. So like, I gave people plenty of like time to know I'm retired on this date. This is it. My last fight. Everyone knows. Brilliant. Because a lot of people, when they do retire from sports, it's instant because it's like yeah. an emo- emotional thing after a loss like I'm retiring yeah. this it's emotional or it's a um, injury that, that, that they sustain and they can't fight again yeah. so it was quite, I thought it was quite a good uh, way how to retire yeah it, it definitely definitely came across that way it was like um, I think it was Dan Hardy that said it You you you're going out on your terms now whether you win, lose, or draw, you've decided that date. That's where I'm done. Yeah. And you could you could see through through the I think it was um a UFC week in with Brad Pickett or something like that. I can't remember the actual name of it, but you could see the emotion that you were having throughout that fight uh, fight week. It's kicking up now. We shed doors flying open. We manage it, um, but yeah, it, it's also it's. I think that's what made you so endearing to the fans as well is the fact that you are emotional and you, you're approachable. Like just for for example, myself, I, I pulled out a hail mary, fancy coming on my podcast, and he was like, "Yeah, sure." It's like well, fucking hell. It's like yeah. you don't. So I I know it's a it's not a huge thing, but. When you see someone with like a little blue tick by the name, when they go, yeah, sure, no problem. You're like, oh, fuck me. It's like, yeah, but that's what I mean. That's what the whole the world the world's weird. Is that I find it just because I've got a blue tick next to my name doesn't make me anything more anything different yeah. to yourself. Uh, I'm still a user. Don't get me wrong. I could be an absolute dickhead, or I could be a nice guy. Having a blue tick by, by, by my name doesn't make it any different. I could no, be a blue tick exactly. nice guy, or I could be a blue tick dick. You could have no blue tick <laughs> guy, you could have a, yeah. a, 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 a no blue tick and still be a dick. So it, it doesn't really yeah. matter. You know? So, yeah, so I, know. I don't see myself above anyone, or I'm like, hey, I'm fine. Yeah. Do you know what you do? Do you know yeah. who I did? You know what? Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I don't You're, see myself above anyone. I, I found that with. Um, a few of the few of my guests on the show it has been um, fighters recently I've had uh, um, like I said I had Jack Shaw Liz Carmouche came on um, uh, Mason Jones and I've got a couple of other Cage Warriors guys it just it's refreshing how down to earth fighters are I'm not sure if that's because um every fucking training session they're getting humbled by someone <laughs> or what but it's just refreshing that you can just sit and have a chat like we've never met before this is the first time we've ever spoken it's, it's just nice and refreshing to be able to just have a conversation with someone that's at such a high level of also, that's, that's that's this is what the world's become now it's quite it's not as hard it's quite easy. People use it and abuse it in different ways. Where, yes, like say someone like uh, I don't know, some crazy famous, like someone like David Beckham, right? In a million years, back in the old Gary Lineker, back in the olden days, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to pick up a, my phone. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna send Gary Lyric a message. That would never happen. I mean, like, how, you know, how would you, how do you even think in your head how can I get hold of this person? Yeah, never nah, happened, right? You may nah. bump into. Lucky as you ever be, is you bump into them in the street or you go to a football match and they're there. But nowadays, it's so much, it's so easier to contact high level people in certain ind- industries, which is good in so many ways because people yeah. use it for a good way, but also some people who use it, abuse it. Oh, oh yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to message Danny Beckham. I'm going to think he's a prick and I hope, I hope his son's died of cancer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send that to yeah. him. And he says, like, what are you doing? What, I mean, it, like, what are you doing? I actually get really it. annoyed with people what I, what I call who are trolls and abuse media because it's like, I find it's like so pointless, right? Uh, I'm like, what, what's going on in your day 
just to go out your way and yeah hang on I'm gonna fucking give that guy some shit I don't even know that guy I ain't got yeah. a clue what that guy's going on we don't know what's going on on with that guy's life at the moment but I'm gonna give him a bit of shit I'm just like whatever I just really find I don't understand people like that. Isn't like for me, like my mum used to say, "If you've got nothing nice to say, just don't say it." My my mum said exactly the same thing. I just hear my my wife doing yeah. it. I know, I know, I know exactly what you mean with that as well. It's like, why do you wake up in the morning and go, "Do you know what I'm going to do? I've seen Brad's last fight." What I'm going to do is I'm going to critique him, even though I've never done anything remotely. Oh, why? Why didn't you block that kick, Brad? Yeah. Oh, I... <laughs> you get you get him. <laughs> just, that's what it is. But but someone will do that. Yeah, I'm lucky if I last night. But you should have blocked it. Oh, just shut up. Yeah. You know? It's me getting a punch in the face for your entertainment, and you want to give me shit. Yeah. It's 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 just bizarre. I think. People who troll, people who send like negative shit, is they're just not nice people in general. I don't think we. I I I had it when I first started my podcast, and the reason uh, why I started it was because I was suffering with uh, depression and and anxiety problems, and I had no way of communicating. Um, I was I'm never any good at writing stuff down, so I thought I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to air it. I'm going to show people that it's okay to talk about it. As soon as I did it, I was getting messages from people who I served with in the military saying that I was lying about it and that I shouldn't be doing it and all this. I was like, oh, who the fuck do you think you are telling me that? Like, it's yeah. going to make things worse. Make things worse. No, so how, could they, how could they comment on how you feel because you're exactly. feeling that's, that's, that's exactly what my brother was saying to me. He'd, he'd phone me up and say, look, Tom, oh, don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. What you're doing is the right thing to do. I was like, all right. Then I'd get another fucking tweet pop up, and it's like, oh. Then it sets me back again. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's, what, that's what. That's the thing, isn't it? Like I said, it's the whole new day and age. I think there's more more mental health problems nowadays than ever. It's apparent. We reason I think there's, I think a lot of it is down to social media, um, because. It's so easy to see negative things, and also depends on how you are as well. Like, say, if you're on social media, say you have, uh, give me an example, like some friends. Some you just look on social media on Instagram stories, and your friends went out last night and had a meal. Why didn't they invite me? Yeah. What did I do? What's going on? What was? So you, so you get all this anxiety build up, and if you, back in the old days, you would never have known that. So nah, you wouldn't even call about it. It wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, exactly. that, that's the one thing. Also, like I say, like say you have a girlfriend, you split up. Back in the old days, the best thing to do is just separate. Don't yeah. think about them. Get on your own life. Not easy nowadays. You just going to no. see what they're doing all the time. Social media's around. You know what they're up to, who they're seeing. It, it's just like so. I think social media now is a big reason. For men to have mental health issues. Hundred percent, hundred percent on that one, definitely. Like it, it's it's so easy for people to get caught up in it. Like uh, she's gonna hate me for it, but my missus is what is one for it. Where she'll see some of her mates that are uh, slimmer, got their lips filled, got fucking hair extensions, and she's like, "Why can't I look like that?" It's like, well, for a start, I don't want you to look like that. And two, they've probably got a filter on and there's a load of bullshit. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I think you're a beautiful fucking person. That's why I married you. Um, And it's just trying to keep her her spirits up, that sort of thing it is. But married life, innit? That's what we've got to do. I still think, again, with social media, you have a lot of celebrities really abused their uh, position. Uh, It's been all over the internet recently, you know, where people are like promoting things they don't even use, don't even know what it is. Yeah, uh, like, just like they're just like, yeah, buy this and lose twenty five pounds in two weeks. Yeah. What is it? Is yeah, we we is we had something similar to that. Mass- at, yeah, huh? on, on that on the school run, um, on the school run, one of the school mums. I'm not going to name her, obviously. 
Um, not that she listens to my show, but whatever. Um, <laughs> she was pr- promoting those um, Juice Plus things. like, And I, I was like saying to me, Mrs. I'm like, yeah, they're all good. They're fine. Because you're getting your vitamins, minerals, all that sort of thing from the shakes. But on. She's not going to lose any weight or do anything differently if she doesn't go to the gym and eat correctly as well. If anything, she was eating wrong. That's why she keeps getting bigger. Yeah. But she posted up a uh, before and after pic, and I wasn't like being nasty or mean. I was like, she hasn't changed. There's no. Yeah. It's like a. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a now and a now pic. That's what it looked like, and it was like. That's the thing with me, also going through diet, because obviously I've been a fight for many, for many years, and weight cut is a big thing. Yeah, so yeah. Like, there's no, it's not, it's not, you don't have to take a scientist to understand weight loss. No. All it is, I can lose weight eat McDonald's every day. Easy. All I have to do is burn more calories than I'm exactly. into. So if, I, if I eat 5,000 calories of burgers in one day, but somehow I burn 6,000 calories from doing so much work, then you're like, I'm in 1,000 calorie deficit that day. I'm going to lose weight. You know? So, but then if, if you exactly. eat really, really healthy, I eat some spinach and broccoli and this and some potatoes here. But yeah, again, I, I, I eat. For 3,000, no, no, even less, 2,000 calories, 1,500 calories a day of broccoli. But I don't I sit on my ass all day and I don't end up burning that many calories. I'm going to put on weight. You know, it's just, it's just literally general math. But I ain't going to lie, obviously, me eat, not all calories are equal. So I could eat like 300 calories of shit food and I'm going to feel like shit and not want yeah. to train. Or I could eat. 300 calories of nice food, some like chicken and vegetables and this and that, and then give myself good energy to want to go train. So and then I'll burn more when I'm training. So exactly. at the end of the day, the bottom line is, the more you put in, the more you go work. Yeah. That's as simple as that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's simple. That's, that's it's the so thing. simple. Um, it's like just maths. Burn, yeah. more, burn more calories than your intake per day, you lose weight. And this is another thing people don't realise, right? They want, they want to see instant changes, yeah. right? Instant. You don't burn fat in one training session or one week. You, you burn fat over accumulating, uh, changing lifestyle by changing your lifestyle and repeating it for a long period of time. And also on the flip reverse, if I've been really clean all the time, and one day out of the blue, I just eat, I have a massive day where I eat loads of I ain't going to put on loads of weight. I may hold what I call water weight. I may hold some water yeah, weight. Yeah. I'm not going to put on fat. You know, putting, eating bad over the duration of time will put on fat. Working out over the duration of time will burn fat. You won't lose it in one session. Yeah, exactly. So I, I try and tell the missus that all the time. It's like, she, she'll look in the mirror or whatever and be like, Oh, I, I can't see any change. It's like, well, you're not going to see any change. You've only been training twice this week. Yeah. Like, yeah. just keep keep going at it, and you'll see the change over time. It's a, a continuous process. And uh, I also call what I call the scales. What I call the scales is the naughty step. Naughty right? step. Because like every time you step on it, you're never happy. No. Right? So who gives a fuck what the scales say? Unless you're a professional fighter, then scales mean something because you're fighting at weight classes. Yeah, yeah, other, yeah. You don't. I can't remember the last time I stepped on the scale now, because yeah. I don't care. That's, it's how I feel. Exactly it's how I feel. You know, it's okay. just how I feel. You know, you you know, you can fluctuate three pounds in a day just by what time of day it is. Or you're a woman, you you're a bit bloated because you're on your period, or or something like that. You know, like yeah, yeah. It, can, it can vary. But then, like, this is how you feel mentally, really. You know? Exactly, and. I, I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big believer in in uh, fitness being a, a huge part of um, mental um, yeah. health and, and well being as a whole because you might hate it for the hour two hours or whatever you're doing while you're working it might be the most horrendous workout you've ever done but by the end of it you're like oh, yeah, I needed that I feel great and that's what a lot of people don't realise they get themselves all worked up. 
oh, I've got to train train. Oh, yeah, but you're going to fucking love it. But there's do. also it's a double-edged shows where I find that if you train, when you finish training, you make better choices not eating bad. Because you're yeah. like, oh, I've just trained. Oh, I'm going to eat something nice. And that's what you do. If you don't train, you sit on the couch, you just binge. You want to eat some of this. And eat. Yeah. So like, it, it's always a double end. It's like, I find when I'm training, I'm eating better. When I don't train, I eat crap. Yeah. It's like, because um, I, I take, like I said earlier, I take um, a boot camp style training every every so often when I get a phone call. Tom, would you find a second track? Yeah, I'll take it. And I tell them that they, as soon as they see my name on the website, I'm taking the session. They automatically, I'm pretty sure the numbers go down because they, they know I'm going to beast them for an hour. And I say it at the start of every session, you're going to hate me for this hour, but you'll thank me at the end. And then to be fair, every single time, it's like, oh, cheers, Tomo, for that. It was a really good session. But well, probably saying that halfway through when you were moaning at me that you had to do more burpees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's all the uh, the coaching going then? You've got any um, any fighters lined up? Big uh, yeah, I've got, I've got well, the biggest fight at the moment is my my guy Nathaniel Wood. He's fighting John Dodson. Um, oh, I did I did see on um a post of some sort. Yeah, so he's fighting John Dodson in uh, February fifteenth, I think it is. So that's not that, that not too long ago, long away, should I say? Uh, so we have that. Uh, I've got a few guys on Cage Warriors, Southeast Coast. Well, I think that's it at the moment. But then I've got people signed the Bellator, so they'll be fighting on the Bellator in London when that's I think that's in April. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm uh, I've got I've got myself some tickets to the Cage Warriors. Um... The, the the one at the O2, I think it's the twentieth of March. So I'll be um I'll be going to that. It's my first proper event that I'll I'll be seeing live. I've saw a, a few um like sort of regional sh- shows before. Um, a mate of mine from back home was fighting, uh, but this is the first first big one. And, uh, I'm actually right. I'm buzzing for it. I'm really am. I I, I yeah, love it. Announced on the card. Say again. Have you got any fighters announced on the card or? Uh, uh, yes. Um, oh, oh, I'm using my phone to record. So Mason Jones is fighting on the main card. I'm not sure who he's fighting. Um, and oh, what's his name? The scout lad. Paddy. Yeah. Paddy Pippen. Yeah, that's the guy. I think he's a um, main event. I think I think it's a title fight. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be um. A good event to go to, I think. Yeah, I have got any my, my guys on that card, so yeah. Sweet. So, how are the um, how are the nippers then? Are they good? Going fast. Uh, they're they're, they're fun. A, a boy and a girl, aren't you? Is that well, right? my buddy who's just turned, he turned four in September, and uh, Poppy who turned one in December. Nah, shit. Yeah. I, I saw that um, clip you put on your story of a coming into your office I think when you were you were doing so I was like oh, that is, she's the cutest mate she's brilliant she's, she's, she's a cute kid she's very funny has, has Buddy got a little uh, picket hat no we haven't got one of those actually have we? no no I haven't. no <laughs> I, we need to get one he's had one yeah. back when he was a baby but no, we, 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 we need to get one yeah yeah, yeah that's got to be a, like a, a, a statement that is yeah, but I don't, I don't know if he's going to... He's interested a little bit now, but yeah, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to be interested in fighting. He's he's more interested in playing chess. That's what he wants to do at the moment. Play like chess, is that? He plays, yeah. That's what he just loves about chess. Yeah. One of, my, one, of my, uh, one of my close mates, his, his son's really into chess. So I was like, random. Don't tend to yeah. hear that much these days. Like, oh, chess, yeah. Like, right. Like we read the books before he goes to bed, and he wants chess. Wants us to read the chess plays. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a reading tactics before he goes to bed. You know, like, what am I doing here? How, how, how to castle? When to castle? When you know? You know <laughs> really. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, that's, that's amazing. I've got I've got two daughters, so I've got two little angels 
So, uh, I've got an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. Okay. okay. And it's more like I've got an 18-year-old and a 15-year-old at the minute with their attitudes that they've got. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's brilliant. But to be fair, they've both just um, gone up. Uh, well, the eldest has gone up two levels in a in a ballet, and the youngest has gone up another level. It's like, you know. Okay, and good. The, yeah, and then the, then the eldest is starting gymnastics fucking next week. Shit. Okay. She's Yeah, she's been bugging me for years to get her into gymnastics. And I was like, oh, one of those. It's like, oh, we will when we've got the finances right. We can get you in. And then it's trying to get the placement. And luckily, we got this email through. Oh, she's got a, a, a taster session placement. Oh, oh, fucking brilliant. I can give her some good news. Get her to burn off some more energy. Yeah. She, my, my eldest is finally she's completely she's she's got 100% my attitude where she's very sarcastic and dry and, and that but body shape wise she is completely the opposite of me she's all limbs and long legs long yeah. arms there's me there's me short and stocky <laughs> it's brilliant kids are brilliant though yeah oh. she, it's fun I, I guess it was now I guess Christmas is pretty good with their ages as well yeah, definitely. Yeah. We we did manage to spoil him a little bit this year, which which was nice. Um, got him on fucking Nintendo and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's, it's more for them. Me, me and the missus sort of went without so that they could have um, yeah. they could have more, which yeah. which is how it should be really. Christmas isn't for us. I, I don't have a Christmas anymore. Really. Nah. And and to be fair to the girls, it was it was amazing for me because I I um. My, my normal job, I, I do security work. So Christmas Day, I was working and I started my shift at six o'clock and they got up. They set, I don't know if they set an alarm or if they were just super excited, but they were up at half past four. They woke me up and they went, oh, daddy, we want, to, we want you to see us open the presents. I was like, that's brilliant. That's made my day. Even though I had to go and sit on a barrier for 12 hours, this has made my day. <laughs> I used to wake up super early when it was Christmas. Oh, hundred oh, percent. Even now, I'm still I'm still a big kid. I'll be going up to bed. I'll be like, oh, "What are the missus have got for me?" Uh, <laughs> but I know the missus have got me the same as you got me last year. Nothing. <laughs> nah, she actually, she, my wife actually got me that Stranger Things Lego for Christmas. Oh, yeah. After, I'm, honestly, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna ping my um, my niece a text when when we finish this. I'm gonna tell her to get it because yeah. she loved her and my brother. They love Lego. I haven't got the patience for it, but they love it. And she is so into Stranger Things, it's unreal. So such a, such a cool piece. It's such a cool piece as well. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get her to get that. In fact, I might even get it for her because I'm nice like that. There you go. <laughs> right, I think, Brad. I don't want to keep you too long, mate. I can see you uh, you yawning and that must be knackering on the train. Yeah, yeah. In, parenting. Put, put the kids down now. I'll be going to bed pretty soon. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I think mine. Yeah, mine should be flat out now. Hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but once again, mate, thanks for coming on the show. No. It's been a, a, an honour to have you on. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's lovely. Cheers, bro. Take care, my friend. And you, mate. Bye-bye.